17. No appetite, Ace. Ace stared at the plate in front of her and shook her head. In the centre of the kitchen table was a large platter with fried eggs, bacon, sausages and fried slices of potato heaped on it. The doctor stepped away from the stove, holding a heavy black frying pan. He scraped brown crescents of mushrooms out of the pan onto the platter. No thanks, said Ace. I'll have some more, sir, said Vincent. The boy was wearing a frayed velvet smoking jacket which Ace usually wore. His hair was tousled and his eyes were bleary. He wiped a piece of bread across his plate, mopping up a yellow smear of egg yolk. He's worked up quite an appetite, said Justine. She tried to catch Ace's eyes, but Ace refused to look at her. Justine shook her head as the doctor offered her the frying pan. I'm all right, she said. He hasn't eaten anything for a long time, said the doctor, watching Vincent. And he's going to need his strength for what lies ahead. Justine nodded, listening carefully to what the doctor said. She took a last drag on her hand-rolled cigarette and ground the butt out on her plate. Ace said nothing. She sat looking out the kitchen window, a small slit high on the tiled wall. The sky outside was a deep dawn blue and birds had begun to sing in the dark garden. When Vincent had finished, the doctor cleared the table and placed a tin box on it. The box was old-fashioned, brightly painted with a hinged lid. Then he ceremoniously placed a stemmed glass in front of Justine, Ace and Vincent and poured a small amount of red wine into each one. He sat down at the table opposite Justine and opened the tin box. Inside were small Italian biscuits wrapped in coloured tissue paper. The four of them ate the bittersweet biscuits, dipping them in the wine, and then, at the doctor's instruction, each of them took one of the discarded wrappers and carefully smoothed it out. They rolled the squares of tissue paper into cylinders and set them upright on the table. Then the doctor took out a box of matches and each of them set the biscuit papers alight. The wrappers were all different colours, but they all burned the same intense, eerie blue-green shade. As they burned, the papers became delicate, charred black cylinders which rose weightlessly off the table, ghost husks that drifted up towards the ceiling. The doctor looked across the table at Ace. Make a wish, he said.